Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at these track headers and have a little idea of what they do. We won't be covering everything because some of them are going to require tutorials all on their own, but I do want to give you a basic overview of what we're looking at here and what we can do with them. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of these bottom three. So I'm going to select the bottom one, hold the shift key and select track three, and then I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to go to delete track. And when I click that, they've all gone. So I can just see these three tracks. And you can hover over a track and change its actual size very easily. Okay, so do bear in mind that they are changeable. You can actually adjust them as you need to. And you can name tracks. So here is the name option for a track. And you can actually double click in there and you can give track a name. So I can just call this, if say for argument this was at the top and I wanted to do all my titles in here, I could call these my titles. Now when we start to use this little button here, which is called track motion, you're going to want to use these titles a lot more to indicate what you have done with that specific track. But that's something for a further tutorial. These buttons to the side allow us firstly to expand the track so we can see it full and we've got a good snapshot of what's inside the events on that track. And again, I can minimize that back and I can even collapse the track entirely and make it very small if I finish working with it and I feel it's taking up too much screen real estate. And you can also see that by the little one, I've got this little flash, which is indicating that this track is active. It is selected. So if I drop another track in here, if I was to go back to my project media tab and go back to my video and choose any other item. So say this one boats in Harbor and hit enter on my keyboard. It's going to go into this particular track. And of course we look before at what we can do. We can actually change how these work. So there's those tracks inside there. So that's showing you that the track is selected. We can change its name. Now this item here is the opacity of the track. And it's important you get this in your brain. It's not the individual clips. Remember, we've got handles for changing the individual clip opacity. This changes the opacity of every single clip in the whole track. So when I pull this down, I'm changing the overall opacity of everything. So you've got to be a little bit careful before you play with that because every single clip in that track, every single event will have its opacity reduced. OK, let's just very briefly go over some of these other buttons. Some of them, as I say, we're going to deal with a bit later on, but let's just have a look at them. You can apply motion blur inside of Sony Vegas, which is brilliant. It's slightly convoluted to apply it, and sometimes it can slow down the workflow because it's quite processor intensive. So there's an option to bypass it in case it's slowing down your work too much. And we'll deal with motion blur a bit later on. I've mentioned track motion. This is for changing how the track looks in 3D space, incidentally. So you can move the way it looks, it goes in and out in space, rotates and what have you. You can even animate that, but that's, as I say, for another tutorial. There is the ability to add effects to the whole track. And again, please notice it says track effects. So whatever effects you add through this button will affect every single event, every single clip on that track. So again, you need to be a little bit careful that you apply this, but it's quite good for applying final grades. So if I want to make something look in a particular way, I can apply a grade across all of my clips and apply a final grade by using a track effect. This item here is for automation modes when you're actually reading and writing and changing things to the clip. We're going to be doing a whole tutorial on automation modes. This one here mutes a track. So if I click that, it disappears. Yes, it mutes it, but it mutes the video so you can't see anything. But also, I've got this one here which is called Solo. And if it had blending modes, I had other tracks underneath that I could see through. In fact, let's just drag something underneath. There, we've got something underneath and turn the, the opacity down so we can start to see the track below. If I click solo, I'm only going to see this track and I'm not going to see the track below. And I'm seeing it at whatever percentage opacity it is at 44%, so I can pull it back up. So solo means only look at this track, but you can solo more than one track. So if you've got a whole bunch of tracks and you just want to hear two of them together, it's quicker than muting all the other ones and then selecting only the ones you want to hear. Just say, OK, I just want to solo this track or I just want to solo that track. And you can turn them on and off accordingly. Now, the ones down here are to do with compositing, and that's mixing one track with another. So at the moment, I've got these two tracks. But if I click this one here, I can say, well, why don't we multiply the two together? And it kind of blends them with a special blend mode. We will talk about this again in a further tutorial. And there are ways of making one thing a compositing parent and a compositing child, which again is going to be for another tutorial. 
But just because I've done all of this, I'm just going to take this back to source alpha. That's normal. Just because we've looked at all of these items doesn't mean that there aren't more things to the header. If you right click on the header, you can see that you could rename it and you could also change some of these switches here. But you can also insert a video track or duplicate the track if you've got it or delete the track. You can also play with envelopes. Now, envelopes give you the ability to be able to animate the composition that we've just shown. So I was showing you that you could blend the two together. Well, if you add an envelope, you can animate it. Now, again, we'll show you in a different tutorial. You can even make it fade to a color so that it goes to one color or another color and you can just select the colors. Again, we'll, we'll deal with this a bit later on. Switches are basically the switches that you've already got and you can choose the colors that you would fade to. You can expand a track as we've done it before and this is for advanced editing when we're looking at our transitions. So we'll come to this edit mode a bit later on again in another tutorial. So I'm going to undo that and you also have the option if you right click to set default track properties and you can see it says select the properties to use in future default for new tracks. These properties will default to the values of the current track. So you can get rid of bits and pieces and new tracks will be without them. So I'm just going to click OK on that one. And again, you've got other options. You can change its color at the moment. This is the color of the track. But if you wanted to change it to another color, you could make it default when you do a new track. So I'm just going to take it back to its default color at the moment. OK, let me show you that default color one more time. Actually, if I go to default color, and I was to choose this green, you can see that the, the actual clips inside the track look green. It doesn't actually affect the color of the header. So I'm going to take the default color back to blue. And it's very similar when we're talking about audio tracks. With audio tracks, you also have the ability to be able to pan things to the right or to the left. And we've got some advanced options for recording and also for going to which inputs to choose and advanced mixing ones. So you'll, you'll see that these are all about advanced mixing. We're not going to deal with all of these ones at the moment. These are for future tutorials, but you'll see when it comes to mixing audio in Sony Vegas, it is very powerful. And we've even got audio meters to show us how the audio is doing. And you can change how those look on the right click option. Again, there's lots of right click options, but you could say, I don't want vertical meters. I want horizontal meters. And there it is as a horizontal meter. And notice it's changed all the tracks. Okay. Cause I've done one header. It's changed all of them, even though this one wasn't selected. So I can take it back to vertical. I can even get rid of those altogether if I want. Don't show them at all. But actually, I do want to see them. And I'm quite happy with that section. So there's an awful lot that you can do with these headers. They're very useful. They can give you a lot of information. But do bear in mind that they affect every single clip in the whole of the track. They are track specific. They are not clip specific. You can change individual clips, which is often what you want to do. But these ones are going to change every single one in the whole of the track. So those are the headers. A brief overview. We'll be looking at a lot of the things in these headers in a lot more detail in future tutorials. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.